that's what he said. I don't know if you were so he was showing this up. I'm going to go reach in anyway. I can hear if you are tuning in. I like to, to provide enough flux so that the tip of that uh, chisel will, will have enough room to fit in there. So maybe one brush width on one side and another brush and a quarter on the other. Um, you can see that there's some dross on the tip and the, uh, the, the brown coloring. If the iron's up to temperature, I'll dip it in here and it takes it all right off, nice and shiny and clean. So what's in there? That's one-third ruby fluid and two-thirds water. So every time before I solder a joint and, it, and immediately after I'm finished soldering a joint, I'll take the dross off by tipping, uh, dipping it in that dip jar. What is that there that you just put on that tip? This is a, a Laco Flux. Got the, it actually has lead in it. after applying a layer of this on the back side, um, it's similar to pre-tinning your uh, metal. And I'm just walking that back and forth, one on, of the iron to the other. You dip your iron, is that just dipping it into flux? That's one-third ruby fluid and two-thirds water. And what that does is, if we look at the bottom side, well, there's not really much dross on this. Um, you can see a few brown specks right there on the tip. Those are dirt and imperfections that are coming out of the solder joint. And that uh, does not allow the, the solder to conduct the heat as effectively to the copper. So what I want to do is clean that tip off. And you just dip it really quickly. And you can see that that comes off really nice and clean. It's called ruby? Ruby fluid. Ruby fluid. That's the stuff right here. Oh, okay. And you can get that online at uh, SlateRoofWarehouse.com. Now, if you if you look at the bottom of this uh, jar, uh, there's quite a bit of sediment, and that's just from two days. So, see, when this iron is ready to use, I want to see just a little curl of smoke come off of it, and then I know that it's at its maximum operating temperature. Um, it's an American Beauty 550 watt iron. It's electronically controlled. It's designed for shop soldering at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So if ambient temperatures drop down below 70 degrees, we revert back to either an acetylene torch, like Liam's using, or a propane fire torch. Because these are just not designed for outdoor work. We've also had to build hoods for these in really windy conditions. Uh, when I do a vertical joint like this, it's lapsing. I want to start at the top of the joint with my iron, leaving the horizontal joint undone so that when I get down to the bottom of the joint, I'm going to make one pass from the top to the bottom. And I'm usually left with some excess solder here at the bottom as it runs down a little bit. And I'll draw that back across the joint so that I don't end up with a big pile here. And I try and keep my, my flux uh, relatively neat because the where you don't flux the copper and I put some solder on it, it doesn't stick. But if I put it anywhere in here, it's going to immediately bond and you, you will not be able to get that off of it. So the neater you keep your flux, 
typically the needed joint's gonna be. I'm actually gonna hit pre-tin pre this a little bit vertically, try and get some solder stuck to both surfaces, because I wasn't able to, to get that joint as flat as I usually like it. I, I would really want to try and beat that seam flat because this is completely loose. I can't get it to flat. So what I need to do is try and get some some type of copper, to, you know, some type of solder to stick to that lower side of the joint. Now that I've heated up the copper a little bit, I'm going to put down the iron and beat that thing flat. Or sometimes to face a little bit of iron on that, so I'm going to reflux that. You can see from the top, you've got a slightly concave joint now. It should allow the iron to bridge over the top of that. I know I'm soldering over one of the blind clips here. I can see a little bit more ridging because the mass of the metal of the clip is drawing the heat away. So I'm gonna make my puddle a little bit bigger and slow down. Now we're off the clip and that solder is going to flatten back out again because we have more heat. It's not being drawn away by the mass of the clip. The clip is the little piece of metal here that was uh, underneath there that holds the uh, copper to the deck, the substrate. Mm -hmm. It's installed blind in this joint. There's another one right here. You can actually see the imprint of it. There's where it starts and there's where it ends. 
um, that extra thickness of copper will suck the heat out of the iron. See a little bit of that dross coming out of the joint. That's dirt, uh, imperfections, p impurities. I'm, I'm speaking about that that black, blackish brown gunk that comes out of the joint. Uh, there's probably some on the back of my tip here that I'm going to want to clean off. And I'm going to do that right now quickly so that I don't lose too much heat out of the iron. Dip it in there, and that tip comes out nice and clean. And get back onto the copper as quickly as possible so I don't lose that heat. Most 